What's up, nerds? We're your hosts this week. I am Jake. We're your hosts every week, and I am Chad. You're right. Uh, but this <laughs> week, we are also always sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We're also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. Uh, so this week, we're going to be talking about the latest episode of The Last of Us, now uh, available through HBO and HBO Max. Also streaming on HBO Max. <laughs> this week, we are also going to be talking about some science news that could really change the way that we look at our universe uh, and everything. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll get into it in a little bit. But before we get into it, let's get into it. This <laughs> is the All Things Nerd Podcast. We're off to a good start today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. So, Jake, Jacoby, Jake Lee, Jake, Jake Lee, uh, how was your week? Well, if I'm going off the script you wrote here, it says butt stuff. <laughs> you didn't give me much to go on, so I just thought I'd write something funny. <laughs> uh, my week's been pretty boring. Um, there's been some exciting stuff. Uh, that I've been working on, and I am not ready to tell any of you yet. So, <laughs> never mind, I'm not gonna go there. Continue. So, so just uh, hang out for a little bit longer. I think maybe next week I might share. I might share. Yeah. Um. Other than that, I was. Oh, you know what? I did do one thing. My girlfriend has a stupid fucking cat. And <laughs> it's a great way to start. <laughs> I built a, uh, uh, we have this small window in our basement and I built a, well, I tried to build three steps up to that window and we made like a roosting spot for the cat to get away from the dogs. Um, but the cat is too fat and lazy <laughs> to actually jump up onto those steps. So then I had to take the middle step out and then built like a, carpeted like plank that goes from the first step to the last step up to the window and Just after a, ramp. a stressful whining cat <laughs> she finally used it so we're there yay yeah. <laughs> how about you chadley <clears throat> chad broham <laughs> Chode, the chudliest dude I know. Yeah, my week was filled with a bunch of nothing. Uh, didn't really do anything. Uh, but something uh, did happen. What happened? You. Oh yeah, I did started... get. <clears throat> I did. Uh, I start a new job. Uh, well, the day that this episode comes out, I'll be starting my new job. Uh, but yeah, pretty excited about that. I'm, I'm ready <laughs> yeah. for it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, outside of what we're talking about though, uh, there is some nerd news, both something that's not that surprising, but kind of like comical and mm -hmm. then something that we've kind of been like hoping for, for mm -hmm. quite a while. So, uh, Take it away, Jacoby. Oh, well, it turns out that the test screenings for Aquaman 2 are so bad that Jason Momoa left the role. <laughs> yeah, he's just like... The, the movie yeah. that is finished will come out still, but he's like... Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, fam. It's gonna, it's for gonna me. be bad. Gonna be bad. Oh, that's gonna be bad. I do. I have always wanted. He just, even without makeup, he looks like Lobo. And if like he's gonna stay in, he also looks like I'm. Whatever. I'm gonna get mad. 
<laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> he looks like Craven. They should never have casted what's his face. Which is a bummer because I like what's his face. Yeah. I just can't think of his name. Aaron, Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Sorry. I love Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, That's just not a Craven esque person. No. no. Fucking Jason Momoa should be playing Craven. Yeah. He should also be playing Lobo because he looks like Lobo right now yeah. without makeup and special effects. You put fucking red contacts on that dude's eyes and paint his fucking skin like pasty white. You don't even got to do CGI. Yeah. Like, he looks like the character. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, Google it. Lobo's fucking dope. Uh, but yeah, no more Jason Momoa's Aquaman. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, I do not support any movie that Amber Heard is in. So, yeah, and even though I, like you said, I love Jason Momoa too. Aquaman wasn't the the right role. I so he. I I didn't hate him. I don't want to like spend too much time on this. I thought Aquaman was really good. The first one, I there were parts of it that I was like, "Well, that's dumb," but like for the most part, I thought the movie was really good. I did enjoy the fact that they were like, "Hey, instead of making Aquaman this like blonde hair, like dorky looking fucking guy, let's put like a badass dude in this character." And, like, who other than Jason Momoa? I love that they did that and, like, brought, like, Aquaman's character to, like, a badass level. That was very cool. Yeah. But there were, like, parts of the movie, you know, like we have discussed on this show, uh, like the octopus playing the drums in the ocean. Fucking stupid. Uh, (laughs) Fucking stupid. Really fucking stupid. Um and it didn't even like drop a cool beat. It was just like burn, 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 burn. You know, you have eight arms, dude. Like, come on. Yeah. Get on it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I'm happy that he's leaving the role. Uh especially with the new direction things are going in. Like he could do better. So Yeah. Uh, but we <laughs> did get some good news also. That Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Uh, it's going to have a, a much bigger role to play. Like in the Kang Dynasty and in upcoming Avengers films. I say, just in general, he signed a huge contract. Yeah, That's going to be awesome. Because like in the comics, I mean, Spider-Man has a much, much bigger role to play. I mean, eventually in the comics, Spider-Man is the leader of the Avengers. And even in... Ooh. And he joins the Fantastic Four at some point in time. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> it's going to be great. I can't remember which comic it is, so I can't quote exactly where it is. But in, I think, in the future, when Cable comes back in time to, like, I think it's time, a Deadpool uh, story. Yeah, but it's nothing that's out in film. It's just, it's a comic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when asked about the future, uh, Deadpool says that Spider-Man is known as the greatest superhero of all time. And we heard rumors about Tom Holland Spider-Man uh, becoming more of a leader. And then Sony started being a bitch about things and back and forth and blah, blah, blah. Who would have thought? But, yeah. He sa- Holland signed a huge contract uh, and... We know that he is going to, yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he is going to um, be one of the, if not the, lead character going into the King Dynasty, uh, which is, dare I say, amazing. I, or would you say spectacular? Oh, I was gonna go ultimate. You know, <laughs> like that's the ultimate situation. You know. Uh but where else will we see Tom Holland's uh, Spider-Man before? Oh, this oh. is a rumor, a, a, a heavily. Um, it holds a, 
speculated holds a lot of weight based on the yeah. the credentials of who released the the rumor. Yeah, that we should see Tom Holland Spider Man as a live action version of himself in um, across the Spider Verse, which is the follow up to Into the Spider Verse, uh, following Miles Morales story. I know that in the first movie they wanted to have Tom Holland cameo, but it would have been a cartoon version of himself. Um, and they couldn't because they were still like fucking slapping each other <laughs> over Marvel and Disney and no. Sony. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now uh, it's, it's it'll just be like a brief, I assume it'll just be like a very brief cameo where they will cross paths as cartoon and live action versions of Spider-Man, which is yeah. cool. That's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome in across the Spider Verse. I think but, it'll be weird in the Marvel realm. Like they probably will never mention it in the Marvel yeah, realm. Probably not. Or like if they did, it would be like, yeah, I met a cartoon once, yeah. and like that would be the end of it. And like exactly. somebody will just be like. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there are rumors that we're going to get uh, Jonathan Majors as v- various variants of the Vakang. I don't know. I wanted to get like three V's in there. Uh, <clears throat> that he's going to be in uh, multiple episodes of Loki season two, uh, from what we've heard. It's going to be a, a, at least three episodes. At least three. If not and more. The trailer for, like, the official trailer for Loki Season 2 is supposed to drop, like, in the next day or two. Oh. Like, the newest trailer. I know there's, like, kind of a trailer <laughs> yeah. already, but, yeah. And we got kind of, like, a, a behind, not a behind the scenes, but, like, a, a clip. We had um, an end credit scene from... Yeah, Quantum Mania, Quantum Mania. Yeah, uh, the Janet Van Dyne story. Yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's a lot of stuff. Before we get to the plant-based meat and potatoes of of this episode, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about our first sponsor. As Jake is so boldly professing, oh yeah. you just spit on it (laughs) Uh, is raise energy drinks fantastic energy drink lots of great flavors Uh, but they have so much more than just energy drinks if that's not your thing they've got you know supplements Uh, is that the cake in the cup or is that the pancakes 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 protein pack pancakes Uh, cake in a cup Cookies. cookies Uh, I don't have the cake in the cup. Oh, but. And a lot of this stuff is plant-based, which is yeah. pretty awesome, too. Like kind of uh, dish-based. Some of it's got some whey protein in it, but... Yeah. A lot of the stuff is also just plant-based, which is pretty awesome for us. Uh, so listen up, learn how to save 15%. We'll be right back with you to talk about The Last of Us. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S 
nerdpodcast.com and use the promo code nerdpodcast at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code nerdpodcast at checkout to let them know that we sent you. Okay, friends, we are going to talk about The Last of Us, Episode 7, now streaming on HBO Max. If you have not watched it, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to ruin it for you. So, I'm sorry, you got like the hiccups. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If you haven't watched it, tune out, tune back in, you know the drill. Uh, You got about one, two, three seconds to get out of here, and now we're going to fuck around anyway. So... We uh, might find out as well. Yeah, we might find out. <laughs> uh, this episode, and actually, I was worried about this episode because uh, I watched the preview last week. I was worried about j- them just like leaving us on a cliffhanger, basically, and not explaining shit for another two weeks. Uh, but they do pick up uh, right where they left off with last week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Joel is. Shishkajol. Yeah, he's bleeding out. Yeah. He, he got stabbed real good. Yeah. Uh, I think, like you, I was also worried because knowing that it was going to be... A lot of this episode is flashback. It kind of goes back and forth between yeah. like real time and a flashback. And that was my worry was that it was going to be all flashback and then we're going to have to wait a whole nother week, like you said, to figure out what happens to Joel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the way that they did it really tied in really well. Because it's yeah. all about... I mean, this episode's about <clears throat> Ellie. <clears throat> and her not giving up on the people that she cares about. Uh, and just, like, fighting till the end no matter what. Mm-hmm. With that being said (laughs) i tried really hard not to say that but i just kind of had to if we have any new listeners we'll have to update people here and there um chad and i apparently say or i'm sorry jake and i apparently say uh (laughs) very frequently uh that being said and we got called out by a certain bully uh and my girlfriend (laughs) <laughs> and <laughs> so now, as a punishment to ourselves, if we say, that being said, we have to take a drink. That being said, go back into it, Chad. Oh. <laughs> but this. Let me, Jake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this entire episode's like flashback sequences. Mm. is really about Ellie getting bit and her first experience with, like, real loss. Mm. Because she's, like... I mean, she's an orphan. She doesn't really know her parents, at least as far as we know. Yeah. Uh, So she has a strong relationship with her roommate at the military school in the QZ. Yeah. Uh, whose name is Riley. Mm -hmm. And Riley, like, runs off. Is gone for three weeks. Ellie thinks she's dead. Turns out Riley's not dead. Uh, but joined the the resistance, if you will, the the fireflies. fireflies. Uh, and Ellie doesn't know how to, like, combat that. Like, how to, like, talk about it. So she's... Like, oh, so you're, like, a terrorist now. It's cool. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to, like... Yeah. Blow shit up. Blow shit up. Like, attack soldiers like Texas. me. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Is is. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> I was actually... I was curious. I wonder if... Uh, and Maybe we haven't talked far enough about it for it to make sense, but... Through the flashbacks, um, maybe we should talk a little bit more about it. Uh, let's keep talking, and then I'll bring this point up because I don't want to like okay skip to the end. That's my bad. Sorry, guys. 
fence. No, <laughs> you're totally fine. Uh, so Riley is now back. She's we we learn later in the episode that she's been stationed somewhere else. So she's mm-hmm. leaving the Boston area to go for to the Fireflies, S- Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. <clears throat> I thought it was Seattle for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Um, and so she wants to have a proper goodbye with Ellie. I mean, they were roommates in military school. They have their best friends and there's kind of like an unspoken love between them until the, the latter part of the episode where they're both like, I love you. And yeah, they do share a kiss. You're right. Uh, I guarantee so many, uh, how do I put this delicately? People, I was going to say just people that look like me, just white, uh, are like, no, because not only is they're gay and interracial. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, They're (laughs) the collective conservative minds were fucking blown. Um, but this episode, just like episode three, where it's a flashback with Bill and Frank, I mean, our issue with episode three was just that it was really long and it didn't tie as much into yeah the Had main storyline. Like this episode where they kind of mixed it, I, yeah. I would have been like super happy. I'd, whatever. And it was episode, a good episode. Episode three was beautiful. It was heartbreaking. It was fantastic storytelling Mm -hmm. neither of us disagree on on that uh but this this episode is really great because it kind of like like you said jumps between Mm -hmm. you know like halfway through the episode it's back to the present time and then it flashes back and then it jumps back at the end Mm -hmm. uh and it shows how the flashback like determines ellie's decision making Mm. um Joel basically tells her, I mean, well, one, how did she get him down there to that place well, he was y- in? You see that, like, she unrolled his sleeping bag, and there's it's like a blood soaked sleeping bag, yeah. and she just, like, dragged his ass. Oh, okay. Well, so basically, he's like, yo, fucking, you got to go ride back to where we just came from, get Tommy. Tommy will help you. He's like, I'm fucking dead. I'm going to die. Yeah. And she's. Like a little, she, you know, she was like, "No, I'm not leaving you," and he's like, "I'll fucking go," and she was like, "Ugh, black she, fangs like, her," you know, go on, and get, she like, get. Run, yeah, <laughs> she like runs to the top of the stairs and shuts the door. I don't love door. you anymore. And that's kind of like where the episode goes to, like the flashback, <clears throat> and then, I mean, ultimately, she doesn't leave him, which is. I don't want to spend like 20 minutes talking about this, but yeah. Yeah. Big stuff happens in the flashback. In in the flashback, we see Ellie and Riley. Riley's her best friend, the, the girl that she has a crush on. What was her name? She has a badass name. I remember like, I was like, I recognize her from something. something and I talk- Storms or Stormy Storm. something? It is Storm. Storm. Yeah, her first name is Storm. I forget what her last name is. is it I'll look Storm it up right now. Ellis? I'm going to feel really bad if I get this wrong. Uh, but while he's looking that up, Riley takes... Storm Reed. Storm Reed, not yeah. Ellis. I'm That's sorry. That's such a cool name. It is a cool Unless name. Unless your last name is Daniels, then not great. But Well, I think she won that, that breakup. Uh... Not great either way. She still endeared it. Yeah. (laughs) Still did it. Uh, (laughs) But uh, Riley takes Ellie to the abandoned mall, like on the edge of the QZ. They're like, oh, but it's like locked down. It's like, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't quarantined off. It was still within the city limits of the QZ. And, uh, they go through the mall. You know, there's power running. They're kids. Yeah. So they have a a traditional, like, 14, 15-year-old first date at the mall. Yeah. 
just no one else is there. And it's adorable. And the lighting and everything of like seeing the arcade for the first time, seeing all the neon lights of all these different stores. Imagine being like 15 year old kids locked in a mall by yourselves. Yeah, it's yeah. so well written and played out. And Ellie finds out that Riley has been assigned to a different QZ, so she's leaving. She finds homemade pipe bombs and is like, you know what, fuck you. Like, this was just your elaborate way of trying to make your goodbye less painful for me, and it, I'm not mm-hmm. here for it. And she starts to leave. She turns around. And she's like, no, I can't leave like this. But there, we see that there's at least, well, there's in effect, in infected individual, uh, like in the mall. And by them rummaging around, playing video games, just being no, kids. No, it was when they were listening to music and dancing on top of the... Well, that's when the, it finally shows up, but yeah. we first see that the All infect wakes is up there. to them playing the video games, yeah. because yeah. that's the whole Mortal Kombat 2 uh, situation. Which was cool, because they're, in the beginning of the episode, Ellie has a Mortal Kombat 2 poster on her wall in her room. Yeah. And then she got to play it. Which yeah. Was, yeah. She, she, like... The idea of the night was that they get to forget mm-hmm. about everything. They just get to be together. Uh, and then it ends in a Halloween shop. And literally so many shot-for-shot aspects from the game are to in the, this episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one thing that I... And this is from someone that hasn't actually played the game, just seen like screenshot to screenshot. Uh I love this because they're so true to the game. And I think that it speaks volumes because there's so many games that have been turned into movies, Mm -hmm. so many movies that turn into games and it never is quite right. But the fact that, (laughs) (laughs) uh, but the fact that Neil Druckmann is, a creator and a writer of the show, and he was also a creator and a writer for the game. Uh, I think that speaks volumes. It's like, if if you want to do an adaptation, like, bring in the people that know the story. And Mm -hmm. that's what this show is doing, and it's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, Well, there's an infected uh, in there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And it goes sideways as it does um and through the struggle between the two Ellie and uh Riley fighting it off um Ellie realizes she's been bit and After as she she kills it though she yeah. like charges it with that switchblade mm-hmm. drives it through its head and realizes that yeah. she's been bit and she's like heartbroken like fuck i'm yeah. dead she f- Freaks out, and as she's freaking out, Riley kind of like raises her hand, and she also has a bite. And they kind of go through a couple options that they show them sitting on the floor, and they're like, We could just take the easy way out, kill ourselves, or we could ride this thing out and take every last minute Hmm. we can. And you see the different levels of grief through it. Like, uh, Riley has accepted it. Yeah. Come to peace with it, understands it. That's and Ellie that's, is like raging, like smashing shit. She's oh yeah, angry. She's denying it. Like no, we're gonna be fine. Well, she's not wrong. Kind of. Ellie's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I this is where I'm curious about is so earlier in the show, uh, I think it was episode. Uh, God damn it. Uh. It was the episode when uh, Joel makes her, like, crawl through the hole in the wall and he, like, fights off the guys or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ellie ends up, like, shooting a guy. And then um, 
when he's like, you're a kid, you shouldn't have to have done that. And she's like, it's not my first kill. So I don't think that her first kill is the zombie that she killed. I think it's Riley. Because well, she killed the zo- that zombie first, and then her and Riley are there. I'm thinking that the first like emotional kill for her, because in yeah. that episode, I think that's episode yeah. five. Yeah, just run with what I was saying. Go for it, bud. Well, are you, are you being mean about this? <laughs> yeah, to... yeah, that's what I was saying, and you're like, no. This is what it is. And I was like, that's what I was saying. Okay, sorry. You continue then. I'm sorry. I don't think she's... She is considering the zombies' kills. Mm. Because she's killed two of them that we know of. And she hasn't talked about either of them. I think, like you were saying just now, the first actual kill that meant something to her is going to be Riley. And I'm curious if they're going to do more flashbacks and show that or if they're just going to insinuate that she killed Riley and that was her first kill. Yeah. Sorry for taking that away from you. No, you're fine. No, no, no. We were saying the same thing, but (laughs) you were like, no, actually. And I was like, that's what I'm saying. Don't know. Actually me. I'm saying what you're saying. (laughs) You fucker. (laughs) I jumped the gun. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, No, you're fine. I don't know. I, also don't know if it'd be more powerful just to like let that Leave be it. like the assumption. Yeah. Cause we know that Ellie survived. We know that mm-hmm. her best friend is dead. And we also know that Riley was bitten. And we also know that they said together, like, let's take every moment together that we can rather than kill ourselves. But yeah. suck like every moment out of this that we can. And mm-hmm. then we know that Ellie is immune now, but she didn't know at the time that she was immune. So like at some point Riley would have changed and Ellie wouldn't have. And because Ellie didn't change Riley's now being manipulated by the cordyceps. She would have had to kill her. Yeah. Would have attacked. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to see that flashback, but if they didn't go there, I would be equally okay with it because, I like you said, I think the assumption is there. It's so... In, it I mean, it's very implied. Yeah. And the fact that, like, before the initial flashback where Ellie is, like, at the door and about to leave Joel to die... And then when she grabs the handle, it flashes back and it shows, you know, the whole, mm-hmm. you know, the, the smart thing to do is to like continue on mm-hmm. or like if you've been bitten, like yeah, kill yourself. So, you know, like none of this stuff happens, but the fact that like Riley never gave up on Ellie, even when Riley like left and joined the fireflies and the fact that joel is telling ellie to leave uh so that he can just die and she can survive the the two most important people in her life never gave up on her yeah so i think that that plays so heavily into why instead of leaving she then searched the house that they were in for anything i Something. mean she yeah. The, the episode cabinet ends. <laughs> yeah, the episode ends with her trying to stitch Joel up, but she, they're just using thread. But it was kind of cool in that scene that Joel like accepted it. Yeah, he wasn't like, "Get the fuck off me! What are you doing? Like, get out of here!" He was just like, "Okay, this is gonna hurt." Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, because like... he like, like you said, he accepts it, but by like grabbing her and being like like he's on death's door yeah and is like okay i i accept help yeah and a big thing for i they they always show a trailer for the next week and i don't want to get into the trailer because we could talk about that too i just want to talk about the one thing 
and it's uh shit, I forgot his name. Uh, the guy who voices Joel in the game has a role in the next episode, um, as one of the people trying to kill Ellie. You don't want to end. You don't want to keep talking about that. Well, I have a, I, Sorry, so I'm just I trying do, to find I, it. I can talk about. I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> I I do have a theory though that in the previous episode, there's the girl uh, who like looks at Ellie and Ellie like kind of snaps about it, and she's like, "What the fuck is she looking at?" Blah blah blah. There is in uh, the Last of Us two, which I don't know much about. I haven't played any of the games. There is a character named Tr- is it Trina, Dina, or Dina. Dina? Dina, 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 D I N A, and it will be Ellie. It will be Jesus Christ. Uh, she will be. Sorry, I'm sorry. She will be Ellie's love interest um, later on. So I have a theory that that girl followed Joel and um, Ellie, saw what happened, and then went to get Tommy. So I think. Because in the preview for next week, they do show, like, Ellie is fighting, like, a group of, like, four or five fully grown men. She's a teenager in the show with a handgun. She's outnumbered, outgunned. But how is she going to come out of this? And Joel is, like, fucking dying on the floor somewhere. So, like, I think Tommy is going to come at the last second and save her. And the only thing that makes sense to me is that that girl followed them, saw what happened, and told Tommy. Otherwise, why would Tommy come? And and that changes uh, my initial theory from last week, was that Tommy Mm -hmm. followed them. Yeah. Uh, And I like that, because it kind of blends the the past and the future, uh, Mm -hmm. like, relationships. Yeah, and the person that you're talking about that plays one of the random people, we don't know who he is, if he's Firefly, just a random scavenger, whatever it might be, but it's uh, that character is played by Troy Baker, who voices Joel in the game. Yeah. Like you were saying. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Because they've done pretty cool. I mean, we've talked about it in other episodes, but the, the... they. The all the voices from the game have played so far have played yeah, except for uh, Anna Torv, I think who who voiced Tess in the original game, but she didn't mm-hmm. come back for any roles because she was being treated for cancer. And then we mentioned a few weeks ago she did pass away. Um, and I'm still hoping for an Ashley Johnson cameo somewhere who mm-hmm. voiced. Ellie in the games, mm-hmm. um, but Perry, what was his name? Oh, the guy, the oh, with the beard. He, oh, he plays Perry, but uh, Jeffrey Pierce voiced Tommy in the original game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we already talked about that. Yeah, we did bring that up before. Yeah. Um, it's great though. But th- I love that they're doing that. It's really cool. This is the most game accurate fucking TV show I've ever seen. And that comes from somebody who has never played the game. So that's a bummer. Which is, <laughs> I mean, we both are ready to play the game. But I have it. It's we're, in my cabinet right there. Both of, both of us are the, are the people that we're going to start the game <laughs> and then we're going to plow through it yeah. before the finale of season one, which ends yeah. at the end of game one. Like yeah. there's, we just don't like we have to wait at this point in time. time. Yeah, yeah. Started the show before the game, and now I don't want to ruin anything for the show. So, but I'm sure that both of us will play part two before season two. That's uh, the so idea. That we, so yeah. that we can compare it as well. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, <sighs> we we've been talking so about <laughs> we've been talking about this show. There's only two I, episodes I left. I still don't have a con. <laughs> This is a damn near perfect show. Yeah, I can't think of... Character building, emotional build, 
the right amount of hope and despair. Like this show is just so fucking good. Yeah. I mean, the fact that I <laughs> have to like try sit here and try to think of something bad to say about it is telling. Like normally that I'm like, is oh, I liked it, but you know, I, mean, I had this problem. This that's problem, what this problem. we have. <laughs> yeah. It's got, not it's not like we're famous or anything, but like that's something that we've been kind of known for is like yeah. movies that we love, we talk shit about. Uh and yeah. this is a damn near perfect show. And I think Jimmy Fallon called it out that uh Pedro Pascal in television has knocked it out of the park. He's four for four. This show, The Last of Us, Game of Thrones, uh, Mandalorian. What was the other one? I lost it. Mm. Wait, so The Last of Us, Game of, Thrones, Game of Thrones, and Narcos. Narcos, which I haven't started. I was, I literally started watching it like two weeks ago because Nicole was down here playing um, Zelda. And I was like, oh, I'm going to let her... Play, and I'm gonna start this show. I've been wanting to watch it, um, and I got about ten minutes in, and she came upstairs and was like, "I'm done," and I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's on my my list as well. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, they're all. I believe Narcos is kind of like where he like exploded. Blew, from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this show is fantastic. Seriously, I haven't even played the game yet, and this is amazing. Go fucking watch it. Seriously. <sighs> sponsor number two. Tell them dos. about our second sponsor. <laughs> sponsor number two is Cry Baby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on damn near anything. Listen up, <laughs> except for Chad. Uh, listen up, and we'll tell you more about it. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, friends. Uh, So this is the All Things Nerd podcast, so we should probably talk about things that are nerdy that aren't in our wheelhouse uh we might sound dumb to some people but like this is big news this is crazy news uh the the news that has come out about the james wed wed the james webb space telescope uh it disrupts like fucking everything Everything we know about the universe. It's insane. Yeah. This is the craziest. This is the... And they won't talk about it, like, on the news. This is just shit that you'll have to read on your own. But this is quite possibly, like, the craziest discovery, like, of our lifetime. Yeah, it's... It's so wild. Because it's still... For those that don't know... The James Wood Webb Telescope. Uh, Chad's got a Chad's got a buzz. <clears throat> I do, <laughs> but like this is so wild. Like uh, <laughs> Jake and I have been talking about this for a couple of days, yeah. and it's like disrupted uh, my daily <laughs> life. <laughs> I mean this this can can completely debunk if further everything further like uh research is done this could 
debunk the Big Bang Theory. Like this, this would mean that for people who don't believe in God and believe in science, you know, rational people, uh, that the Big <laughs> Bang Theory. But but th- that's the thing. What? Is, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that the Big Bang Theory is the creation of everything, right? This, uh, the James Webb Telescope found galaxies outside of our galaxy that are younger than our galaxy, but ten times the size of our galaxy, which should not fucking happen. It doesn't make sense. Scientists are completely baffled. They're like... This, it, there's something wrong is happening. This shouldn't be a thing. It's it completely. I don't I don't know how to like build. <clears throat> I don't know how to build this up enough. I feel like I'm underselling it. This is insane. This is they're talking about having to rewrite every textbook ever written about what we know about the universe. Everything, everything that we've been taught in schools about the universe is shit because of this discovery. Like, this is insane. And if you're if you're not taking us seriously on this, look it up. Please read about this. It's fucking kind of scary. <laughs> like, it's, that, it's not. It's the thing that it's mind blowing. Yeah, the thing it, that we talked about the other day is it. Is it going to affect your day to day life? No. Life's going to go on the way it has been going on. But the way you think about the world and the space and the universe as we know it is changed forever. Factually yeah. changed. And it's that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> it is incredibly terrifying. It doesn't debunk. Uh, it's the the Lambda Cold Dark Matter formula, which is how we thought about how galaxies came to be mm-hmm. uh, post Big Bang, which is kind of like miniature Big Bangs. Yeah. But uh, the James Webb Telescope is looking to the edge of the universe, which means in through light years and math and stuff like that, the stuff that it's seen is the the dawn of our universe and they're they are seeing things that should not mathematically exist if you're aware of what the big bang theory is the big bang theory is the theory it's not factual it's theory that there was a explosion that created everything in our universe that is forever expanding um, and all these galaxies and blah, blah, blah are expanding within that universe. And we are just traveling through space at speeds that don't make fucking sense. And this doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. But this new theory is showing that there are galaxies that are younger than our galaxy and bigger than our galaxy. And they shouldn't be bigger than our galaxy if they're younger than our galaxy. That doesn't make any fucking sense. (laughs) (laughs) And that's what now scientists have to figure out. How the fuck are these galaxies bigger than our galaxy, but younger at a rate of expansion that is equal to the Big Bang? It doesn't make sense. And they don't understand it. This is a new discovery. I'm sure in like 20 years we'll get a... I'm just kidding. I don't know how long it's going to take. There are smart people out there. They'll figure it out. But <laughs> this is mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. And this is the All Things Nerd podcast. And space is the final frontier. This is the nerdiest thing that we could talk about. And we had to talk about it. This blows my fucking mind. I, I think... When I read it, it I, ruined my day. Ruined my day. I and I when I told Chad about it because I was like, "Did you read the thing I sent you?" And he's like, "No. What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Fucking look on the internet. I'll wait." 
<laughs> and like we both sat there for I mean 20 30 minutes just like back and forth going I <laughs> what, what does that mean? What does life mean now? Like everything we know about the universe is not right. And the <laughs> as of right now they're saying it doesn't debunk the big bang theory but it at least upsets the way that we understand how galaxies come to be. Exactly. Because there shouldn't be there shouldn't be galaxies outside of our galaxy that are younger and bigger than our galaxy. Yeah, there shouldn't so, there shouldn't be galaxies that are as developed mm-hmm. this far away. And I don't know if you understand how big our galaxy is. These galaxies, and there's a cluster of them, six of them, I believe, are ten times, ten times the size of our galaxy. (laughs) And about half the age of our galaxy. And, like, our solar system is one of literally a hundred million stars. Our solar system that we learn about, you know, in in school, elementary, primary, whatever you want to call it, is eight large floating rocks and one that we've demoted to be a slightly less <laughs> rotating rock around one star. Yeah. And there's over 100 million just in our galaxy. Yeah. And we're finding six new galaxies. And go, go outside and grab a handful of sand. Okay? There are more stars in our one galaxy than there are grains of sand on planet Earth. Let that fucking sink in and blow your mind for a second. More stars in one galaxy than there are grains of sand on Earth. And there are an infinite, that we theorize, infinite number of galaxies outside of this galaxy. And we just found six of them. Yeah. That's... That defy logic or math or, sorry, maths uh, of what we understand about life in the world and everything like that and we just found six i just feel like a, we're underselling this i feel like people <clears throat> that are gonna listen to this podcast and be like yeah there's, there's shit in space I there's get it. no way to <laughs> accurately sell it that's what's so fucking crazy this is, is this the craziest fucking discovery since the hubble telescope discovered that there was shit Outside of our galaxy. The this Hubble is... telescope was only 20... <laughs> 28 years old? 1996? Yeah. yeah. Like, sorry, 27? Like, it, it's been able to rent a car for two years. Like... <laughs> and, like, if any of you know more than we know, leave a comment. I want to know what you know. And I'm not saying that because I want to get famous. Like, whatever. We know we're not going to get famous. We Just... also don't no, like, yeah, we both have a basic understanding out of because we're intrigued, not because yeah. we have formal education in theoretical physics yeah. or astronomical physics. Like, we we don't know. Yeah, and it still ruined a fucking weekend <laughs> because yeah. this shit is so crazy. Like, it goes above and beyond a common comprehension, and it just defies people that even... Everything. Don't... That don't have that formal education, but, like, accept science, and are like, oh, this theory has been accepted for long enough, I think I can accept it too. And then this happens, and we're like, what? Well, like... I mean, science is forever changing. The what was it? Uh, they they thought 
at some point in time that atoms were like the smallest organism ever. And then sometime later, they cut it open and they were like, hey, look at all this shit inside of it. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, that's from friends. But that's something that actually happened. Yeah. And they were like, holy shit, there are smaller things inside of this thing. Uh, They call them quars? Science is always changing. So right now, Mm. up until like very recently, we were like, Big Bang Theory created everything. Yeah. And then they're like... And, like, this discovery doesn't change. Uh, it's called the the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Theory. Mm. This goes back to, like, Einstein and stuff like that of looking at quartz, not, not the rock, I think quartz, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, the, the subatomic particles that make up an atom. Um, this doesn't change that, and it doesn't change the fact of our understanding that it takes this lambda, uh, formula to create miniature Big Bangs that creates galaxies and stuff like that, and I know that you and I talked about this, is the Big Bang Theory might have been debunked by this, but yeah. like the concept of the Big Bang Theory still can work for individual galaxies. But the fact that there's a galaxy that was <clears throat> far, far away. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not wrong, uh, but so fresh from the Big Bang that we understand at this point in time. The fact that that galaxy is larger and those has six, six galaxies. Yeah, but the fact <laughs> that those exist in there, they are so large. Like, it changes that formula. Like, it doesn't fit into our current understanding. So, at the very least, we're going to get tons of fucking cosmic knowledge as how galaxies are formed, created, grow. When Wor- they... Worst case scenario, everything's fucking shit. We don't understand anything, <laughs> and the world has to change because of it. When they launched the James Webb Telescope, I was super excited about it. And I remember talking to some people. I won't name them for the sake of the pod. Like, not the podcast, but, like, just my personal life. Uh, yeah. And they were like, eh, whatever. It's just a fucking thing, you know? what they're gonna take pictures of space and i was like yeah that's exciting and they're gonna take pictures of the edge of space they i don't i should i they're didn't plan on talking this far about it so I, pictures don't, of I didn't pull up and i didn't pull up a name uh but they're very smart people that i don't have named i'm very sorry uh and i can't quote them and i feel bad because they should get this credit but they said that this, the James Webb Telescope, will be, in our lifetime, the the very device that finds extraterrestrial life in our in the universe. Like, and look at what it's already given us. It's already shattered what we know about the universe. I, and I it's think only I, been out there for what two four, years, six months. James Webb. James it, Webb just launched. Bro. It was launched in the uh, late fall. I think it was like November, October of 2021. So about a year in four months. Okay. Uh, but that I, could be right. I think that... The, well, one of the articles that I sent you about it mentioned that's the only reason I know it. I thought it was more recent than that, too. I did, too. Uh, uh, yep, you're right. Twenty December 20... It launched on Christmas... Oh, uh, 2021. Tw- 2021. So, yeah. barely over a year. Yeah. And it was, like, damaged for a few months. Yeah. Because of, like, just space debris. But uh, is one of the people that you're talking about uh, Michio Kaku, the guy that wrote the God Equation? That's the guy that was on the video that I sent you. Yeah. 
where yeah. he's like, this it we doesn't it, all it, of it our doesn't textbooks. debunk the grand theory, but like we have to like rewrite you said, re- yeah. rewrite textbooks because it it still changes so much. And that's I mean that's one, that's just one of the books that he's written about the universe. But that's just universe. one year over a little over one year out there. And that thing the James the cool thing about the James Webb is that there's no return trip for this telescope. It is just fucking going. And yeah. going and going and going and reporting everything that it possibly can back. And we have in one year, we've already shattered everything we know about the fucking universe. So it's so what wild. the fuck are we gonna find out there? It's crazy. Yeah, and we we know that this isn't our normal topic for the podcast, but like this is some nerdy shit that mm. changes real life, like nerdier than we can even. Yeah, nerd. You know, this, if if we are like. And this is being generous to us. If we are top class nerds, like top tier nerds, you ask about ask us about comics. Like, yeah, we got answers. Uh, <laughs> this is like top tier geek. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We we our understanding and function is like science fiction. Yeah, this is just fucking non-fiction go like, read about it and let it blow wild. your mind out of the back of your skull because it will if you're somebody who is like yeah space whatever like it it changes you. so much like <laughs> does it change our day-to-day life as of now right now no soon Probably. Maybe. Yeah. For our lifetimes, probably not. The next generation. I think we're avoiding the elephant in the room, and it's called aliens. Yeah. This is one of my favorite, and again, I don't know who said it, but this is my favorite quote about aliens. Sticking a spoon in the ocean and pulling it up and saying there are no sharks in the ocean because there are no sharks in this spoon is the same thing as saying there are no aliens in the universe because we, as this little floating rock, can't see them. Yeah. And that was one of the things about the one, a couple of these galaxies is it's because of relatively, relatively, relativity, because of relativity <laughs> and the speed of light and stuff like that, and the way that the telescope works, you know, it's capturing light from billions of years ago, mm-hmm. and we're seeing stuff that billions of years ago looks to be more developed than what we are today. Yeah, which yeah. There's a theory that if extraterrestrials were looking through a telescope at Earth and they were light years away, that they would be seeing dinosaurs right now. Because yeah. that takes so long to like see, you know, whatever. But because as as far as our understanding is, you cannot go faster than the speed of light. No. That's why Warp speed, Scotty! That's why that's science. I'm giving it all she has, <laughs> Captain. Sorry, but that—that's why that's science fiction. Because, like, mm-hmm. theoretically, you possibly could go faster than that, but it's never been developed, so it's still fiction. It's still a theory. So that means, like, looking through telescopes and stuff like that, and also, like, space is so empty. I it's, mean, even the, it's infinitely the... empty and infinitely bigger than emptiness and that infinite is getting more infinite which makes no fucking sense it doesn't make any fucking sense sense. but most of the stars that we see in our night sky are dead dead 
they're not even if you were to travel there yeah they don't exist warps, they don't they're not even there anymore yeah so like their light is only just reaching us sorry for the science lesson guys go read about this this is it's so fascinating oh my a god fucking huge discovery this changes everything about everything and i can't wait to see how christians flip out about this <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's the devil because like <laughs> dinosaur bones yeah right <laughs> oh sorry that was not intended i'm so sorry everyone uh but we i guess uh we're gonna go ahead and close out this episode well before we close out this episode we do have our honorable and dishonorable mentions to talk about I Chad, think the what dishonorable you got? mention is just for you yeah um totally is so i mean like we've kind of been talking about uh shrinking Every week mm-hmm. uh, on Apple Fridays TV. on Apple TV. Oh, it's <laughs> so good. I love this show. Yeah. It's so great. Um, outside of that, though, my other honorable mention, uh, and I know I'm so late to the party, but you you got me to <laughs> to finally do it. Is uh, watching How to Train Your Dragon. And how many of them did you watch? Oh, I watched all three. <laughs> uh, I watched them over the course of two days. And, like, I had heard the soundtrack, so I knew how that. Good are they? Oh, my God, they're so good. Uh, yeah, they're, they are incredible. They are my favorite animated movies. Yeah, I don't... Is How to Train Your Dragon. I don't care how old I am. I don't, I also don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking great. They're uh, so good. I, I made the mistake of waiting so long to watch them, but I at least got to watch all three of, like... Like, back to back. Oh, it was so good. Nah. They're delightful. It might be a bit much, but instead of getting drunk and watching one of them, I got a little stoned uh, and and watched the third one. And <laughs> even though I had seen like online clips of like the final scene and I <laughs> knew what was coming, I was very uh, baked and bawled my eyes out because it's just <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Like, I have no shame about it. It was glorious. It was... Man. We had we had talked about uh, very recently that they are making a live action. And that, if you can call it a live action, it's like calling The Lion King live action, like the remake. Yeah. Or... It's not... It's obviously going to be CGI, but the actors will be live action. Um they're re- they're remaking the How to Train Your Dragon movies uh, live action, and as I was talking to Chad about it, I was like, "This is crazy." He's like, "Yeah, I never saw him," and I'm like, "Are you fucking daft? You gotta watch." This. <laughs> you I didn't actually call you daft, daft but <laughs> you might as well have. <laughs> I was like, "Dude, they're the best fucking, the best animated movies." I mean. The best thing since Shrek, and if you love Shrek, dude, check these out. They're they're so good. Yeah, it's fantastic. I loved it. What about you? What did you watch this week? <sighs> okay, well, the good one, we watched The Descent. I've seen it before. Nicole hasn't seen it. Uh, it's fucking cool, man. It's like cave divers that, like, end up bumping into and getting murdered by a bunch of like humanoid type cave dwellers that are kind of like they're not vampires but they're kind of like bats as they're blind um but you know they murder people and stuff uh (laughs) it's really really creepy i'm underselling the shit out of it it's really creepy there's a lot of fun jump scares in it uh, again, it's called The Descent. Do not, I repeat, 
do not watch the two sequels. They are garbage. The first <laughs> one is the only one you need. Um, <laughs> and then we also watched, and this is my dishonorable mention, uh, it was on Hulu. It's called Slayers with Thomas Jane. I don't even want to talk about what it's about, but if you're thinking about like, hey, that looks interesting, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that might be good. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Cool. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. So, you know. All right. Uh, well, what do you have <laughs> to tell our listeners? Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> No, give us your money. Good night, San Diego. I want that money. <laughs> dun, dun, nah, 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 nah. That's what yeah. I want. Yeah, basically, if, we need it if, to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, you can give us money monthly through buymeacoffee.com slash all things nerd. You get some cool extras. If you don't want to give on a monthly basis, we suggest just going to allthingsnerdpodcast.com and buying some merch. Because yeah. that's a one-time thing, and you still get something cool. Mm-hmm. Either way, we love you. And if you don't support us, then uh, it's kind of like you. if you don't chew Big Red. Oh, we still love them. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. It's okay. It's still fun. Like, whatever. Yeah. If you're not in a position to where you can or want to support us, I mean, we we definitely understand that. Uh, but if that's the case, I mean, share the podcast. Give us likes. Follow Give us. Back. Give it back. <laughs> Give it back. We do this for fun. Yeah. More, m- most importantly, is we do this for fun. And the, the give us your money thing is kind of a joke that we've been doing for a while. Kind of um, a joke. Yeah. It's kind, kind of a of... joke. Like... We put our own money into this thing, yeah, and we're, we're we love it. We're still doing it. Your money would help us do more, bigger, better things. Like go to cons and. Get and we're not going to get paid from it. Like yeah. that's that's the last goal. Yeah, we're not. We have not ever pocketed a dime from this thing. We just like doing it. And uh, if you guys want to help us do it bigger. Uh, you know, the little. (laughs) (laughs) Throw a little something our way, and, um, you know. Yeah. And you don't, like Chad said, you don't have to donate. Uh, go to our merch store and buy something. We profit, the, or the podcast profits from that. Um, and then we put that money back into the podcast. So, buy something. Buy a t shirt. Buy a coffee mug. Buy something, you know? Or just tell someone else about it, and then maybe they'll buy something. Mm. And at the very least, like, you're supporting us just by getting us views and likes mm. and stuff like that. Uh, and it 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 all does help. And I know that sounds so cheesy, but, like, it really does. So, uh, we're over 100 episodes in, and we couldn't be more happy about where we're going and we have a lot to bring to you in the next year and we love you all and so thank you and this has been the all things nerd podcast two claps and a loop claps and a